Hi guys, welcome to this series of three videos which will provide a comprehensive overview of 5G mobile networks. Overall, we are covering three areas, introduction, network and services, and techniques and terminologies. The first video introduces 5G networks and we will start with the basics. We will look at 5G as a customer to see what kind of speeds it can give you and what kind of network deployments are possible and what kind of use cases it can enable. The second video goes into the details of 5G networks and service types that are enabled by 5G. The second video also examines things like network architecture, so details of the network, and technologies like network slicing. And finally, the third video will help you understand the terminologies and techniques that are used in 5G networks like uh, massive MIMO, DSS, beamforming, duplexing schemes, etc. So let's dive into our first video, which is about introduction to 5G. If you already get decent mobile service from your existing 4G network, you may wonder, do I really need 5G? On the other hand, if your mobile operator's 4G service is poor, you may perceive 5G as an improvement that can give you a better mobile service. But that is only true if you define good mobile service as unlimited voice calls and texts and fast mobile data speeds. Now, do you really think that mobile operators are investing so much money in the innovations 5G brings so that they can improve your voice calls, text messages, and mobile data? Well, not exactly. Delivery of mature consumer services like voice calls, texts, and mobile data is more of a given in 5G. 5G is not just about the services you get directly, but also about the services you get indirectly. Services you get directly are things like voice calls, watching HD videos, and basically things you already do with your existing mobile service. But there's another angle where 5G can offer you many services indirectly. Let's use the example of smart meters to understand the concept of indirect services. Smart meters often use a SIM card to send meter readings to your energy provider. You don't have to pay for that SIM card because your energy provider takes care of that. So you pay for your energy consumption and your energy provider uses a mobile service in the background, indirectly benefiting you from the mobile service. 5G can take these indirect services to another level because it is highly flexible. As a result, it can enable many indirect services, for example, public safety when outdoors, self-driving cars, mass deployment of IoT devices, and many more. Every time they introduce a new mobile network technology, there are some key customer requirements and use cases that that technology must fulfill. Otherwise, of course, there isn't much point in making these huge network investments. As a basic rule, every new generation of mobile networks is designed to deliver more efficiently than the earlier generation. So the new generation can use the same resources to provide a better output. With that in mind, the technology 5G networks use is new radio, abbreviated as NR. 5G NR is more efficient and flexible than 4G LTE. 5G can deliver much higher speeds than 4G networks. Before diving into more advanced areas of 5G, let's answer some basic questions as a customer about the phone and SIM requirements for 5G. The first step towards accessing 5G is to get a 5G compatible mobile phone. A 4G phone will not allow you to access 5G because a 4G phone only supports LTE and earlier technologies. 5G uses NR technology which requires new hardware. In this table on your screen, looking at the first scenario, if you have a 4G SIM and are tied to a 4G tariff, you may only be able to access 4G, 3G and 2G services, but not 5G. So it doesn't matter if you have a 4G or 5G phone in that scenario. In the second scenario, if you have a 4G SIM, but are not tied to a 4G tariff, you can access 5G if you have a 5G phone. Similarly, if you get a new 5G SIM, you can access 5G on a 5G phone, but on a 4G phone, you can only access 4G LTE at best. Two essential levers in 5G networks, just like earlier mobile networks, are data rate and latency. Data rate or bit rate is the amount of data 
you download or upload in one second. Generally, data rate is what people refer to as download speed or upload speed. The higher the data rate, the better. For example, 500 Mbps is better than 50 Mbps. Latency. Generally, the round trip time, RTT, is perceived as latency. RTT is the time it takes for your download request to trigger a response from the server and then for you to receive the first bit or packet of the response. The lower the latency, the better. For example, 5 milliseconds is better than 50 milliseconds. Let's have a look at this lovely slide that shows some 5G speed tests. These are 5G speeds for one of the UK's largest mobile operators and the tests were carried out between July 2021 and Feb 2023. I have sorted the data for this graph such that the lowest latencies are on the left side and the highest latencies are on the right side. To be able to analyze these results, let's look at three of these readings marked as 1, 2 and 3. Looking at the first one at the bottom left, the lowest latency in the tests was 13 milliseconds. The download speed for this test was 128.2 Mbps and the upload speed was 13.8 Mbps. The second test at the bottom right had a very high latency of 67 milliseconds when the download speed was as high as 378.3 Mbps and the upload was 113.9 Mbps. So what do you think is happening here? Is the latency going up as the data rate goes up? Of course not. Data rates and latency are independent. For example, check out this third reading at the top where the download speed is 492.9 Mbps, the upload speed is 115 Mbps and the latency is only 16 milliseconds. So basically, there isn't any direct correlation between the download speeds and the latency. They are independent. What does that mean? It means it is possible to achieve very low latencies even if your data rates are not high. So if you're a gamer, the readings you want are on the left side of this graph where the latencies are at the lowest. Five G is a highly flexible generation of mobile networks that can use network resources to create different combinations of data rates and latency levels to deliver services of various types. While the 5G networks support voice calls, text messages, and high-speed mobile data, just like the early generation of mobile networks, most advanced 5G use cases focus on the connectivity for machines. Now, this doesn't mean that 5G doesn't care about humans. It really and truly does. In fact, machine communication services enabled by 5G are intended to improve how we operate in our societies and live our lives. 5G is designed to support the different needs of machines, including extended battery life, extremely low latencies, high and low data rates, reliable service delivery, and many more. 5G is enabled by new radio technology that, when fully deployed, uses a 5G radio network, a 5G core network, and a 5G transport network to support use cases in three different categories. The three categories of 5G use cases are Enhanced or Extreme Mobile Broadband EMBB, Massive Machine Type Communication MMTC, and Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communication URLLC. Let's look at this triangle on the right. Any documentation you see on 5G will likely include this triangle representing the 5G use case classes or categories or service types. Starting from the top, EMBB is the most relevant use case we can all relate to. It is about mobile broadband, just like the existing 4G LTE broadband services. The peak speed of 5G is over 10 Gbps, which is considerably higher than 4G LTE. The average speed of 5G is around 150 to 200 Mbps indoors, but it is not uncommon to see speeds of 500 Mbps outdoors. But it all depends on your mobile operator and their coverage in your location. The next use case category is URLLC or Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communication. URLLC is about highly reliable communication 
with low data rates at very low latencies. Here, the communication is expected to be near real time and so reliable that it must work 99.99% .99 of the time. It includes mission critical applications where failure is not an option. For example, imagine you have a self-driving car that is driving you to work. Now, for obvious reasons, you don't want any network issues during the drive because uh, having to contact customer support during the drive and hearing something like, have you tried rebooting your car, will probably not really help your situation. What will help though is ultra-reliable low latency communication or URLLC. Finally, the third use case category is MMTC or Massive Machine Type Communication. This use case category is about the mass deployment of low-powered IoT devices. Here, the critical requirement is long battery life and low complexity, which low-powered communication enables. It includes devices like sensors and actuators where you want the batteries to just work rather than you having to run around with a screwdriver in your back pocket to replace batteries every other day. There are two types of 5G network deployments, standalone 5G networks, 5G SA, and non-standalone 5G networks, 5G NSA. 5G SA and 5G NSA are called 5G deployment models or deployment modes. 5G NSA is suitable for basic use cases, for example, mobile broadband, while 5G SA is for advanced use cases, for example, self-driving cars. The difference between the two models is best understood when looking at simplified network diagrams. While a mobile network has many network components, there are two key groups of network components that mainly differentiate the various generations of mobile networks. And these network component groups are the radio network and core network. If you look at this diagram on the screen, you can see a highly simplified view of a mobile network. A mobile device, for example, a mobile phone, is connected to cell towers to establish a mobile network connection. Cell towers are part of the radio network. Okay, so if you have never seen a base station before, this is what it looks like. Okay, so this tall thing over here, this is the base station. The radio network then connects to the core network that is the brains of a mobile network. Finally, the core network is linked to external networks like landline telephones, the internet, etc. So your phone can connect to outside networks. Let's now have a look at this slightly modified network diagram that shows the 5G network architecture at a high level. In this diagram, we have a 5G mobile phone that establishes a connection with the 5G radio network, which is linked to the 5G core network. Finally, the 5G core network connects the mobile phone to outside networks like the internet. The simplified architecture with an end-to-end -end 5G network, where the radio and core networks are both 5G, is called a stand-alone 5G network. In simple terms, it just means that this 5G network is independent and it can operate without technically relying on the 4G LTE network. Before diving into the difference between standalone and non-standalone 5G networks, let's understand the concept of user and control planes in mobile communications. The user plane carries user data, for example, the content of the YouTube video you may be watching on your phone. The control plane carries control functions such as signaling traffic. Standalone 5G, 5G SA, is a full 5G network deployment that uses a 5G radio network and a 5G core network. The 5G radio network is called NGRAN, Next Generation Radio Access Network, and the 5G core network is called the 5G Cloud Native Core, 5GC or 5GCN. The user plane and control plane are both provided by the 5G network, which means the end user service where high data is required uses the 5G radio network and 5G core network. The control functions such as signaling also use the 5G radio and core networks. 
Non-standalone 5G or 5G NSA is a deployment model where a mobile operator deploys a 5G radio network, NGRAN, but uses their existing 4G core network, Evolve Packet Core or EPC. 5G NSA can be seen as the first step towards 5G and early deployments of 5G worldwide are NSA. In NSA, the user plane is 5G and the control plane is 4G, which means the end user side of the service where higher data is required utilizes the 5G radio network and the control functions such as signaling use the existing 4G LTE core network. If you want to download these slides, you can find the links in the description. I have created two versions of the slide deck, one free version and one full version. You can download whichever one you like. Thanks for watching the video guys, I've written a detailed post on this topic and the link is in the description. If you like this video, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm posting new videos all the time.